In this tutorial, we're going to spend some time finding the equation of a graph and then using that to extrapolate and get some information about uh, something that's happened in the past or something that will happen in the future. And this graph is very specific, so this is a type of uh, problem where you're given some type of model, some real world graph. Although this is not too real world, I'd like something more real world than this. Uh, we could still find the equation of this graph. This skill belongs to the algebra group. It's, uh, like I stated, find the equation of a linear model given a graph and use this linear equation to extrapolate results. Extrapolate means basically to predict results that have happened in the future or have happened in the past. Uh, prerequisite skills you'll need. You should be able to read a graph, compute slope, evaluate equations at given values, and then find equations giving, given two points. In this case, uh, whenever you're asked to find the equation of a line, there's a couple things you have to remember. Uh, one, that the only real true equation of a line that you really need is the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus. All other forms that you may have learned, uh, which pretty much are only going to is only going to be one other form, which is the point-slope form, kind of useless. This form is really the the king of uh, the forms for linear equations. In this case, I will probably not use these letters. I'll probably use an n instead of a y because uh, our vertical axis represents the number of cars so I might use n for that and then I'll use t for this the horizontal axis because really we're talking about time so we have something like this. Now one other thing I should or a couple other things I should mention m is the slope and that B is the Y intercept or the vertical intercept. Maybe I shouldn't even write Y, I'll just write vertical intercept because the fact is we don't have a Y. Few things you should be aware of here. There's a break in the horizontal axis which means that you cannot just look and say, oh yeah, it it intercepts the vertical axis at 7. It actually doesn't. That's a visual, that's an illusion. You have to use mathematics to find the vertical intercept. The slope, as you should recall, is just rise over run, which is also written as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x2, y2, and x1, y1 are just points on your graph. Now, I'll go ahead and label this point as, uh, let's see, input of 6, output of 6, and another point right here, input of 8, output of 4. And I'll go ahead and say it's, it's a habit of mine to use the point to the right as my second point. So this will be my x2, y2. And the point to the left I, I generally use as the leftmost point or the first point. And when I write this out, I make sure that my y values are on top and that I stack them over their corresponding x values. So y value on top, I'll start with a fraction bar, the y value of 4 for this point, and I'll stack it over its x value of 8. Minus, minus, the y value for the other point is 6 and its corresponding x value is also 6. So when I do the subtraction I get a negative 2 over 2 or in other words a negative 1. So that is the slope of this equation. So now I know that my equation is n equals a negative 1 times t plus b. Now honestly you don't need a negative 1 times t, you could have just a negative t there. So maybe I'll, I'll erase the uh, 1 on that and re just replace it with a T here. Now the only other thing I need in this equation is this little B that I'm missing. And here's why I say you do not need the point-slope form. That point-slope form, which I never have written down uh, yet, um, is useless because they 
they make you find a point and a slope and plug it in, all that fun stuff. But you can actually find out what this missing B value is by plugging in one of these two points you just used. So I'm going to choose to plug in the second point, but if you plug in the first point for n and t, you will get the same value that I will. Now remember, the first variable, and I know I wrote x2, y2, and x1, y1, even though I'm using n's and t's. I just realized that. Okay. Anyway, the first coordinate here corresponds to t values. The second co coordinate corresponds to n values. That's my heights and my horizontals. So I'll let t equal 8, and I'll let n equal 4, and this allows me to solve for b. I'll just add 8 to both sides. Let me write that down. I'll add 8 to both sides here. And I get that b is equal to 12. And that's because negative 8 plus 8 cancels. 4 plus 8 is 12. So not only do I have my equation e is n equals a negative t, but now we know it's plus instead of b. I'll rewrite that as 12. So that is my equation for the situation. n, the number of cars, is equal to negative t plus 12. And that's how finding equations of the lines always work. You just need a couple points to find the slope. And then, once you have that, you plug one of those points in to find out what your y-intercept is. If you're lucky, sometimes they even give you a slope. And then some point as well. If you're super lucky, they give you a slope and a y-intercept. Another thing I should mention here, do you notice that the y-intercept, or I'm sorry, the vertical intercept is 12? I told you that was going to be different than that 7. It's because it's breaking the graph. This this vertical axis is actually 6 units to the left here. It's just that the way it's drawn, it looks like it's right next to uh, our line. But in, in reality, we have this little break going on here. It should be 6 units over. Now, part B is just asking us to use the equation to predict the number of cars in the parking structure at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is a time. So we're going to let t equal 3. You'll get n is equal to a negative 3 plus 12. That's by letting t equal 3. And that'll be 9. And of course, what we need to really do is interpret this result. n is 9. Doesn't mean there's 9 cars. Remember, the number of cars is in hundreds. We have 900 cars at 3 p.m. And that is how you write the equation of a line for a given graph and how you use that equation to extrapolate or to predict data for the past or the future.